All right, a couple things that I want to talk about is our setup first. So um, notice I'm right-handed, so I have my colors off to my right. I have a clean palette because we're going to be mixing some colors in, in order to make our watercolor landscape. Um, I have my sketchbook. Um, I'm starting out with a pencil first. You don't have to, but we're going to talk about um, some of the properties of um, a landscape. Um, that we're going to be transferring over to doing our watercolor. I have my brushes. I have just a flat brush and then I also have just a round brush. Either one of these two will work. And over here I have my cup of water. And the only other thing that you need is a piece of tissue paper to clean off your brushes or blot up any extra watercolor. All right, so first off, before I get started with my brushes, I want to take my pencil. So we've just finished up doing work with um, value as it applies to our pencil. So we're going to translate what we know already to our um, watercolor landscape we did before. So if we look over here, I've created a small sketch. So basically what I've done is it's created several lines that indicate layers of land like the landscape that we're going to do. So there's nothing magical about this except we're just creating about four different layers. We're going to think about these. In the landscape we have things that are in the foreground which will generally be in the things in the front, areas in the middle ground, and then areas will be in the background which includes sky or sometimes very far off distance. We're going to call this like mountain tops or something like that. As we go back, we're going to be using a wash technique primarily on this um, example. Although I'll be doing a couple things that we did, like we experimented, we could do blotting or things like that. But this is generally going to be a wash exercise and an exercise on layering and understanding water and controlling the drying. But as we do our wash, we are going to want to go very light, so minimal amounts of pigment. And then in, as we move forward, we will have layers of that could be a little bit lighter, moving into layers that would be increasingly darker. And how that's going to translate, we're going to practice doing a value scale just like we did with our pencil, but we are going to do that with the watercolor first. So as we progress from our foreground, middle ground, to background, you will notice that in each one of these layers, I have increased the amount of pressure on my pencil in this case, so that we can have this view of a traditional type of mountain scene. And we call this atmospheric perspective. So in atmospheric perspective, the things that you see in the foreground are going to have much more contrast, so darkness to lightness, and as we move to our middle ground, it lessens the amount of contrast. It also lessens the amount of sharpness, so things can get much more blurred as we move further and further away, and much more crisp and darker as we move closer to the foreground. So let's practice that just by doing a simple value scale with our watercolors first. So with me, you can pick, we're going to do this exercise with one color only and gradually lighten and darken those values while we're doing our landscape and the value scale. So you can pick whatever color brown's a good color, something that's a little bit darker, the violet would be good, blue. Um, you could even do this with traditional black if you wanted to. Um, you can try a mixture of a little bit of red and maybe a little bit of black to make more of like a burgundy type color. So I'm going to add water and then I need a clean, my cleaned off palette. So let me just show you what this looks like when I'm mixing it. So first thing, I'm just going to go ahead and create 
a palette. So I've got some water here. And then I'm going to get some of my blue. And I'm going to mix up a little bit of this blue in here. It's always good to have a little tester area so you can kind of see how much color that is. Now we know that if we keep our paper towel close by, we can always adjust this a little bit as we go. But I'm gonna make this go from my lightest to my darkest. So I'm gonna start first by mixing up a little bit more of my darker color. Let me say this is a medium kind of color. So I'm gonna come in here with my medium color and get a sense for how dark this is. Easily, if you put this down and it feels much too dark, first thing off, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this so you can see, I can blot my paper and remove that pretty quickly right there. I can also come in and say it's too dark, just go ahead and clean off my brush, add some water to it, and then come back in and lighten that up just like that. Okay, so that's the first. So that's the, how you can kind of test, or you can do a little tester off to the side and just kind of gauge how dark or light that color is here. Now, in looking at this, knowing that I'm gonna go from very dark to a lighter color, this looks like probably it would be somewhere in here right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my second value. I'm gonna leave this to white, okay? So I have this, a much lighter value in this one. It's also good to kind of see how long this takes to dry because we don't want to need too much water to it. But then I'm gonna add just, I'm gonna dip my brush into water and then I'm going to come over here and I'm gonna leave a little bit of space. Let me soak up a little of that water. I'm gonna leave a little bit of space so it doesn't spill over so I can see that color right there. So a little bit of space right here because you know if this color is gonna bleed into that one. Now I'm gonna come back in here and I know I wanna make this darker than what I had before. So I'm gonna take a little bit more of that blue in here and I'm gonna go ahead and make that darker value in my next one. That looks good. All right, my next one over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of black to that color. So again, I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna add my black, this is where my black is. Ooh, and notice right here what happened. That's okay, but a little bit of black and it got really, really dark. So it's always good to kind of test out first so what I like to do when I do this right here, I just take my brush over here to a new section that it's all cleaned off, come over here, add my blue that I've already mixed up over here. Maybe a little bit more blue. Okay, now I've got a darker value. So I can come in here. So again, I've added black to this. These other three, no black was added to these. A little bit of black was added to this one. And that's a pretty big jump right here. So if I see that, so it's always good to play around because it's been a while since I've messed with this blue color. It's always good to come back in and adjust as you go. So I came in and I just adding a little bit more blue into this one. That feels better. It's got a little bit more blue to it. So that's a good value shift from light, medium, a little, that all blue. And then now I've added a little bit of black to it. Now this time, I'm gonna clean off my brush. And then I'm gonna get this good dark black color over here that I originally had gotten before. And then add in that black. This is what we call a monochromatic color scheme. 
monochromatic meaning one color. So we've got one color going from white of the page all the way to the darkest, so we've added the black in. So in this middle stage right here, it's only blue and then a little bit of black and then really, really dark black. All right, now if you feel successful with that, we are gonna take our knowledge from this atmospheric perspective of going more contrast to lesser contrast and more blurring to create our landscape over here. Now the first thing we need to do is, is with our pencil, if it makes you feel a little bit more comfortable, to, to lightly draw in your landscape. So again, we're just gonna be drawing our layers in this. So in here, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna lightly indicate my furthest mountain right there. This is my furthest mountain, and I don't know if you guys can see, I might have to draw darker, but I want you guys to see we're going very light on this. And then here I'm gonna draw my second layer, my heel. And then we'll draw our third, and you can make your shapes however you wish. And then lastly, our last layer right here. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're gonna come in and we're gonna work on our background first. This is our lightest layer. So something very important about watercolor is, is that as you're going, remember you can see what's underneath. So if I'm mixing, so I'm gonna stay with my same blue monochromatic palette. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna make a very light so some of my lightest tones right here for this background up here. I'm also going to have my tissue paper close by so that I can do blotting with that because I'm going to make it feel like almost the clouds. Now you could use on this a wet on wet technique too. Ooh, let me try that first. I'll show that first before I show the blotting. So if you want to, wet on wet, remember, you can come in and just define the area Maybe I'll show this to you first. That you want it to stay. So if you'll notice, I am going around all of my mountains because it's gonna keep it in that general area. And I'm gonna stay within my pencil lines. So that means anytime I add my color in here, it is only gonna spill and spill over into this area that I've already defined. Now I'm gonna come in and add in some of this light tone in this area. So I can just simply drop it, kind of like we did last time for that wet on wet, and it will gradually start to just blend however it wants to. Remember, it's gonna do that spreading. So my video's showing it kind of lightly, because again, I want this to be very, very light. Another technique you could use for this, this wet on wet is really good for this. Another technique you could do, if you wanna stay with something that looks like a clouds, so something really soft like this and atmospheric, is you could blot. So again, you don't have to do this part, but if you don't want to, you can let this jaw dry, or you can come in and you could do some of your um, clouds by just pressing in that paper towel. And again, I want this to be very soft. Don't want to do, go too heavy. This is supposed to look very much like clouds or something and soft. So I think everything in the back is really, really soft. All right, I think I can do this because it's not too wet right here. If yours is too wet, you need to wait a couple of minutes for that right there to dry. Right. Now, and here I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna mix in some more of my blue, because again, I'm working on that monochromatic palette. But I want it to be a little bit darker than my lightest color right here. So, lighter, add more water. And if that's gotten too dark, just simply move to your next area of your palette and put that color in there. 
Now you can test it because again, you can layer things on. So this is my next layer right here. So I'm gonna come in and add in this layer. So again, I'm staying only where those pencil lines were. And this is kind of a technique where you can go and outline first, if you do it quickly, and then just kind of blend down. Now, I might not do this if I was doing acrylic or anything else, but because we're doing this with watercolor, and if I know I layer, I am gonna get darker as I go. And if I start with my lightest color first, I can come and I can just blend all of this all the way to the bottom. Nice, soft, this is that wash technique again. It is probably going to take about two minutes for this to be dry enough for me to go on to my next layer. So a couple things you can do. If you're impatient, you can take a hair dryer and blow on this right here and that will dry it up pretty quickly, 30 seconds or so. If you've put too much water on here, that could be a problem, it may take a little bit longer. We don't wanna wet this thing too much. So again, practice just controlling that wetness so it doesn't get too wet because you don't want it really bubbling up on everything and knowing that we're gonna add some more layers as we go. All right, so while we're waiting on this to just do a little dry, let's go ahead and mix up our next color. So on this one, again, We've got another layer right here, and I want to get that one so that it is um, that darkest blue color. So let me go ahead and put some more blue in here for this layer, because we have, we have the background, then we have one layer here, so that's two layers, three layers, four layers, and five layers on here. So I'm gonna be using up every single one of these values that I have in my value scale. All right, let's touch right here. That's looking pretty good. Maybe about 30 more seconds or so, and then you can come in. So we're gonna repeat the process of the wash in this area next. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna do the exact same thing as I did before. I'm gonna kinda of quickly come into my edges first Then I can go much quicker on the way down. And see, because I did everything all at once, on that second layer, I do not see any of those lines because I've came all the way down. I've allowed it to dry just enough. This is the test, so you could just watch. If it's bleeding right here, you're gonna to need to allow those layers to dry a little bit longer. All right, so again, another little bit longer right here and I want to go ahead and start mixing up. Now, I've moved on to this one over here. Remember, we added a little bit of black to our blue, so let's mix up another little bit of this. And this is the one that I had a little bit of black in over here. Good, and I haven't changed my brush at all. So I don't need to, I'm not having enough detail that I need to. The other good thing about this is I can barely see these lines to my pencil, which is awesome because again, I can't come back and erase these lines later. So I'm gonna have to do it light enough so that you can see it, so that you can still use that for your layers, but then yet um, that, that you won't be able to see it when it gets done. All right, 
I'm, I'm still a little bit wet, but let's go ahead and let's test it a little bit because just for the, you might want to wait just a few more minutes for yours. The other good thing about this is, is these, these layers that we've done, it's not specific. You don't have to have a certain mountain range in mind right now. Now, I am noticing as I do this, that this layer is good and it's a little bit darker, but I possibly could darken this up a little bit more. The great thing about this and watercolor and the fact that I went lightly on that layer is the fact that we can always add to it again. And so we can put another layer of darkness on here and it will still work out just fine. So that's what I'm gonna do. Well, I'll put this down, I look at it, and I'm like, oh, I think it could be a little bit darker. Now, we can't go back and lighten it up, but we can go back and darken it. So I'm going to add a little bit more of that blue in. I'm going to come in just a little bit of black. Remember, just a little bit because black is so strong. It's the darkest value, so we don't need as much of it when we mix anything up. Darker the value, less pigment you need. And let's just test it out. Okay. It's pretty dramatic, but it's okay. Especially when I spread it out a little bit. Good. I think it just gives me a little bit more punch. And again, I'm going to smooth that all out. Nice wash technique. Nice and soft. Okay, so now I'm going to fix up this last layer. I'm just going to add in more of that black. But I'm going to add a little trick because at the end, we're gonna actually going to add some trees into the foreground here. So I don't want it to be way too dark knowing that I'm going to come back in and add some other detail into the foreground. This is when you can personalize your, your um, design. Now, I really need to lighten the, I mean, to let this kind of um, get a little bit lighter. So let's practice something. I'll just show you the practice in the foreground. I'm gonna put some trees up here in the foreground while this is drying. So I can just simply practice that by taking some of that dark color I've just mixed up. And I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna add a few trees. Now your trees can be anything they want. I'm just, I'm adding, see notice how I'm just angling my brush and I'm getting it a little bit longer as it comes and I'm gonna add almost like cypress, Christmas trees, into the foreground, into this. There's different types of trees you can do. I will say, if you do want to come back in and add a lot of detail to your trees, you could come in with a Sharpie marker and add that. So you could come in and say you want to add more of like just regular tree branches, winter trees, say, coming out. One thing that I like to do when I do um, trees is when you do the, I can't come out on this side too much, but you can on your trees, I'm going into my picture, <laughs> oops, oops, seeing you're getting taken over. You can come in and you can take your brush and just kind of fleck it out like this so that your limbs get a little bit thinner as they go out, kind of like this. So that's some branch styles that you can do, but you can also do that with Sharpie marker. All right, so I think this is dried just a little bit. I'm gonna come back into my last layer, and I've got this darkest, my black over here. A little bit of blue. And then I'm gonna come in, and I cannot even see, but that's okay. We're just gonna make this last layer up. All right, now, once you let this dry all the way, you can come in and add in these trees into your foreground over here. 
So I'm going to let this dry because you're going to want this to be really, really crisp and really, really detailed. And if you want to, you can look up some other trees so that you can see them, so that you can kind of add them into the sides over here into the background. So I'll wrap that up and you can watch me finish once this is dried.